What's up, everyone? Hello, everybody, and today new episode here in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur. So lots of new faces here, so let us introduce ourselves again. So my name is Justin. My name is Alina. And together we've been traveling full time around Southeast Asia for the last seven or nine, how many months? Seven. <laughs> seven months. Already? So yeah, it's been a while. And today, first stop, we're going to Batu Cave. So for you to go to Batu Cave, because Batu Cave is rather far away and it works a little bit differently compared to the normal subways that you take here in Kuala Lumpur. So you can't just buy one of those tokens, get one of those tokens from the machine. So you have to physically go to a counter, get a card, which is for this train line called Commuter. And just then we paid 20 ringgits in total, so 10 ringgits per person for us to go from here to Batu Cave. And now we're waiting train. Um, we still need to wait around 20 minutes. As you can see, don't have conditions. So I, I see already dressed so <laughs> waterfall. <laughs> Thank you. I'm the melting ice cream here. Yeah. Oh baby, this just woman. Welcome to Batu Cave, one of the most famous attractions and landmarks here in Kuala Lumpur. You can't say you've been to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia without visiting Batu Cave. And later we will gonna climb up there and it's around 272 steps and it's really around maybe 15 minutes, so it's a little bit exercise. Depending on your personal strengths, but I will highly recommend because on a hot day like this, make sure to stay hydrated, so buy water before you go up there. Guys, I feel like I'm terrified of pigeons. Not, not because of them flying. For one, they're flying straight into me, and also secondly, they might poop on your head, so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and make I just, sure we're, we're kept... I just have this <laughs> fear of pigeon for some reason. So that was a very short climb actually. It wasn't that hard. The stairs looked very scary, but it was actually... I think the more scary part is a monkey on the stairs because they just take everything from your hands. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, plastic bag, everything. <laughs> They're like the ambush for you to get up here. But anyway, we are here at the top of the hill. And yeah, I think up here is nice and chill. I can feel the breeze. So humid here. Uh, you can see a lot of water dropped from yep. up. And also lots of algae around here, the green algae on the rocks. Yeah, I hope we can find here some beds because I know before when this is a place only just open, many Chinese people come here to pick up bed sheet to use this like a um, house call for... Fertilizers. Yeah, right, fertilizers. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I remember when I was uh, my first time here, it was a couple years back when I was maybe six years old. My first time here, I actually saw bats at sunset when they flew out of the cave. It was very interesting and quite a sight to see. But uh, here, what we see flying are mostly pigeons at the moment. <laughs> yeah, a lot of pigeons. Okay, let's go to inside, see what is there. So the climate inside this cave is very humid and lots of algae around and so it's good that we brought our caps with us just because the water droplets keep hitting on. <laughs> See, the one just hit uh, Alina. It's drop on me. <laughs> yeah, it's good that you, you bring a cap or uh, don't be too excessive and bring an umbrella, you don't need that. But yeah, a cap would be nice, I think. And also, if you guys haven't seen enough hints already, this is a Hindu temple inside a cave. I can feel here some special atmosphere. It's a relaxing place, really. You like spiritual? Yeah. Chicken. Out of nowhere, there is a chicken right there. I don't understand why. Boyfriend duties. Photo you can see on Instagram.
So that pretty much concludes what to expect at Batu Cave. It was truly a sight to see, but apart from tourist attractions, a big reason why we came to Malaysia is because of the food. Malaysian food is very diverse, mainly influenced by Thai, Chinese, Indonesian and Indian cuisine. Next up, we arrived in Petaling Jaya to eat at a legendary restaurant. Everyone loves food, especially when it comes to Malaysian food, it's one of my favorite. First stop of this food trip today is this place called Village Park Restaurant and this place is one of the most famous dish in Malaysia, also called the national dish, Nasi Lemak. Many people have said if you've been to Kuala Lumpur but you haven't tried this restaurant, then you haven't been to Kuala Lumpur yet. Uh, can I get a nasi lemak ayam goreng? Uh, just one, please. And then one hot honey tea. Hot honey lemon tea. Yeah. All right, so just now when we're waiting in line, it only took us around five to 10 minutes. So the table turnaround time is really far just because staff here are super efficient in packing, even delivery. They said sometimes it could be faster than sitting in. And some people actually say if you order delivery, the taste is actually even better than if you eat it in person. So as you can see, this restaurant here is really packed at the moment. There are lots of people sitting around us with very close proximity as well. This restaurant is so popular. You can see lots of uh, news, like they have got with celebrities photos on the wall. That just shows how popular and how famous this spot is. That's why lots of tourists, they even like would carry the luggages or bags to come here to this restaurant. Well, for me, I'm first time really see it when people sit so close to each other like this and it's only 12 or 1 p.m. and it's really like fully booked. It's really crazy for me because I'm from Russia and in Russia I really don't have like this. Uh, in Russia, people usually don't wait so long. <laughs> and I hope one day when we get so famous, 1 million subscribers, they all put ours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Only five minutes and they serve really fast. So you guys don't know what nasi lemak is. Basically, it is a dish with rice cooked in coconut milk and also it's served with pandan leaf. This one, we ordered the fried chicken that comes with the nasi lemak. Usually, nasi lemak has a few ingredients. For example, one is the chili sambal. I think many of you, if you've been to Indonesia, you know what sambal is. also very famous and popular here in Malaysia. Sambal, also fried anchovies, some roasted peanuts, and also slices of cucumber as well. All right, let's give this a try. This is the most famous nasi lemak in Kuala Lumpur. So uh, let's see if it's still see worth the title. All right, so the chicken is quite tender, I would say. Just from observation, there's a lot of juice inside as well. Mm. Fried chicken, good. Oh, forgot. There's also a hard boiled egg inside. I know Malaysians usually have very high spice tolerance compared to <laughs> me, so um, but overall, I think it's a very tasty dish because uh, everything just works well together. I have to agree, this is the best nasi lemak I've ever had in my life, I think. And I can taste that strong coconut rice flavor and also the fragrance from the rice and also I guess some bao. Tastes really good. Okay, my time to try. You know I'm not really good with spicy food, but uh, okay. Big bite, big bite, everything, everything. Chicken, chicken, chicken. It's a little bit sweet and spicy. Sweet and spicy. Mm. Do you taste a bit of coconut? I can feel coconut. Mm. Oh, oh, I can feel it. <laughs> so like, oh. It's the after burn. <laughs> it's okay, you've got a tea here. Yeah. It's tasty. Yeah. I think if it's no spicy, it won't be <laughs> like tasty like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's good, really good. Woo! Justin, enjoy his meal. Oh, another one. <laughs> All right, some afterthoughts about this nasi lemak. What the f Why is this so tasty? This is the best nasi lemak I've ever had in my life. And this only costs 12 ringgit 30 cents. So yeah, easily the best nasi lemak I've ever had in my life. Just said I was gonna get a delivery, but we're thinking about getting around this area for quite a bit longer, so. <sighs> I wish I could order delivery and just bring it home for dinner tonight again. What comes after food? More food. See, my only memory of Malaysia when I was a child was a special dessert that can only be found in traditional mak mak restaurants in Malaysia. So today, we are revisiting it. So we're talking about my childhood memories here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It's always coming back here for my cousins and their family bring me to a local mak mak restaurant. These are mak mak restaurants and they would 
invite me to eat something called roti tisu, which is a dessert. Or some people actually eat it for dinner, but it's very sweet. Basically, it's like a pyramid kind of thing with a lot of sugar on top. And let me show you guys how it's made and how it looks like now. Sorry, this is one of the famous restaurants in, I think this is a popular chain store. It's called Nasi Kanda Kalita. So just to show you how a mukbang restaurant's layout look like. So always at the front, you'll see a whole bunch of different varieties of curry. And also there is the, for example, the fried chickens or something else. There are lots of curries over there as well. So something very popular in Mukbang restaurant is Nasi Kanda, which is a mix of curry in different dishes. Usually they'll get a one spoon of each curry and then put it into a plate. So it's very delicious. Today we're not here to eat Nasi Kanda. Today we're here to eat Roti Tisu. So it's going to over that that counter over there so let's just find a table and settle in let's get the roti tisu just one roti tisu ah stirring it okay guess how much is our meal roti tisu guess 10 lower lower 8 lower 5 lower what yeah it's 3 ringgit in total for the dessert Let's get into the middle part. Let me get you a good piece. See, it's so light. I like how in Malaysian restaurants everything is so clean. It's like chips, almost like chips. <laughs> this one for you. Eating air. Like I ordered a whole coconut. I a long time couldn't find whole coconut. So refreshing. Ooh. So much meat inside. If you guys drink coconut and you don't eat inside the meal, uh, wait, meal. If, you, if you guys uh, drink coconut but you don't eat inside the meat, then you guys are missing out. All right, Alina. Big spoon. Soup all good. Whoa. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you like this episode, make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe to our channel. And uh, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. See you. Bye bye. <laughs>